Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Saricolia coming to you once again with another book review and uh, happy Saturday. Um, you know, thank you for spending the time uh, with me uh, watching these videos, these lengthy videos. But I want to review another one of the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe collections uh, by Dark Horse Comics. This is a huge book, it's def definitely the largest that I have in my collection. It is even hard to keep, you know, put on frame here with the camera because it's extremely, extremely large. But in my opinion, it's one of the coolest books I have in my collection. I really love this one. But before we go into the review, I want to uh, invite you, encourage you to support this channel, not only by liking, uh, subscribing, uh, commenting, but also consider uh, supporting financially. Uh, you can do that through Patreon, or if you don't want to commit in a monthly basis, you can also do that through PayPal. All the links are down below. Uh, whatever you are able to help out, it really supports my channel, supports my vision, and the ability for me to produce more content for you. So let's just get into the review. Now I want to give you a comparison so that way you know exactly how big this book is. So I'll give you this for example right here. This is the previous He-Man Masters of the Universe mini comic collection that I review. Look at this. It's very small, very compact, very heavy book. Look at that. Just the size comparison is very, very different as you can see. This is a lot larger, a lot thicker. And of course, you saw all the mini comic collections. You can see the link um, where you know I reviewed this book. I love this one, definitely. I highly recommend it. And the price was pretty cheap in comparison to other books. So you see how big it is? Now, I'm gonna give you another comparison. And in this case, this is for, this is X-Men Mutant Genesis. Uh, this is actually the size of an omnibus. So if you compare it right there, you can see the omnibus right there, right next to it. Definitely, of course, the absolute is big, but it's not even as big as this. So definitely you can see how, uh, you know, how much difference there is. Now you can see this is, uh, you know, the hardcover, very nice. Um, of course, the image of He-Man, He-Man Masters of the Universe, the newspaper comic strip. Now, if you move it right there on the side, it says He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the same thing, newspaper comic strip, another image of, of course, uh, He-Man and Dark Horse Comics on the side. Now, if you look in the back, of course, you can see uh, another image, He-Man battling uh, Skeletor. And for over four years, Master of the Universe had its own newspaper comic strip. The story continued the tales from the Filmation cartoon and reached the saga to the Space Team New Adventures of He-Man cartoon relaunch. The comic strip only ran in selected newspapers and was never reprinted, uh, so most fans have never read it until now. Dark Horse brings you the first collection of these strips, restore and ready for you to unleash the power. And of course, Mattel, Dark Horse Comics, and of course, very, very, very well put together book. Now, opening the book, of course, you see this. I love this design that actually Dark Horse does uh, with this book. So of course, they all same, follow the same format. Um, you can see right there. I love the quality, the paper too. I love the introduction. Uh, this is my childhood right here. You know, the masters of the universe. I love the, the show. I love the toys when I was a kid. Who, who, who didn't, you know? Uh, I like here, you can see the people that are involved in the process. And there's a table of content. Very cool. I love when the, the books have table of contents. That way you know exactly which pages you go in. Now you have the foreword by Danielle Gellerter. Actually, she is also known as Penny Dreadful. Uh, she's very uh, well known, very famous within Masters of the Universe uh, fans because she is actually, uh, she's been involved in the, the power con. She's been involved in uh, Masters of the Universe community. Uh, people, the collectors, the people that love the series. She's actually was involved in getting all this together. Uh, technically, she was the editor of the whole thing. Uh, there's a video where she talks about it. She presents this. I'm going to have the link so you can actually watch it. Very useful information. She's talking about the process for them to put all this together. Uh, she's also uh, very famous within the horror community. She, uh, he and her husband were producing or were uh, creating a show that didn't really doesn't air in much places, but made some places in the U.S. and some other parts uh, that it was called The Shilling Shockers. 
Uh, unfortunately, her husband passed away no long ago, but um, definitely uh, she is very well, uh, re she's respected within the community and she did a heck of a job putting all this together. So definitely uh, her and her team really did uh, such an amazing job that I wish more people would do for other franchises. So uh, if you can see right here, uh, day of the comet. Actually, this story was uh, the stories and a lot of people here involved in this process are the same. You guys, Jim Shaw. Uh, Jim Shaw, I, I'm not so sure that he's still alive, but he was the creator. I think he's not, but he, um, I don't remember, but Jim Shaw, he was a, he worked for Filmation and he also worked for other companies and comic book companies and all editors. He's the one that created the first story. Um, definitely, this is the introduction to the whole newspaper series. Uh, and then Gerald Forden, who is actually was born in um, uh, in Belgium. Uh, in this case, his father was a very well respected, well known um, Mr. Forden. I forgot his first name, Louis Forden. Uh, very uh, famous in France. He's a legend uh, within the comics uh, community over there. Uh, back in the 20s and the 30s, he was really involved in the in the search and the growth of comics in France. Uh, he's a legend. And Gerald Fortin actually is a legend too. Uh, he was very involved in the 50s and 60s in the, the comics over there. And uh, beautiful comics. He's a great artist. And um, of course, before uh, uh, then, uh, before he came to the U.S. and started working for Filmation and started working for comics or Marvel and DC Comics back in the 80s, that's when he got involved into this process. But he's a legend. Now, we'll, you'll see his art. And of course, you got Connie Shore. She's the colorist. She used to work for Filmation. Uh, she's the colorist of the entirety of the book. Uh, she did the Sunday strips. So now we're coming into this. Uh, the dailies uh, on the newspaper are all black and white. The Sunday strips uh, were in color. But one thing I like about this series here is that how similar uh, you can see the colors, uh, you know, you can see to the animation is. Now in the mini comics, um, the the art um, it was very different. Of course, you got great artists like Mark Teixeira and uh, some so many great artists. But the art was totally different. That was before the the, the show. So it didn't follow the same pattern, the show followed of its own. But of course, uh, the people here that were involved in the process here, they of course are work for Filmation. So they're the same artists that, you know, writing and, uh, you know, drawing and, and coloring. So uh, Fordon, he's actually, uh, he, he did a lot of the artwork for the Filmation for the cartoons. So of course, it was very natural for him to bring all this here together. So. Definitely, there's a lot of cool stories here, and uh, the quality of the paper is phenomenal. And I love the color, I love the ink, and of course, you, you can see his style. Uh, very retro, very classic, and that's the reason why I think a lot of people love the show. And here you can see an interview with Gerald Fordham. Uh, of course, he's the illustrator. And uh, what I like about this book is that it takes time to really place homage to the people involved in the process. Something that sometimes even the omnibuses from Marvel or DC don't do, don't take the time. They honor the art, but not necessarily the people behind the art. So I, I like that they did here. That there's a lot of uh, useful information. Now you got Vengeance of the Viper King. That's the, the other one. There's different, there's 15 story arcs here. And uh, this is the story art by Chris Weber. Uh, Chris Weber, uh, also writer, he did a lot of stuff for Hanna-Barbera. He did a lot of stuff for a lot of these cartoons. And of course, he was involved in the entirety of the process uh, of this book. And you got Gerald Fordon, of course, again. Again, he's the one that um, pretty much drew for the four years and a half the entirety of this book. Uh, Connie Sure, the colorist as well. And Karen Wilson, she's the editor. And actually, she's married to Chris Weber. Um, there is also an interview. Um, uh, I think through PowerCon, there is a panel where they all sit in together, all these people sit in together and they ask him questions. I'm going to have the link so you can watch it, very useful information there. Uh, I love those type of panels. I love to listen to the process of, creator, the, of creating this type of things. But look at this. I love the art. Definitely phenomenal. Again, you know, Fortin is such a powerhouse when it comes about his art. Uh, it's easier sometimes to here in America to really get boggled down with the art of Americans. We also, you know, we tend to praise, of course, the greatest of the time, you know, Romita, um, you know, Busima, uh, Kirby. We, we praise them all because we consider them the best uh, artists of all times. But um, they were not necessarily the only ones. Of course, they're, 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 they're legends. They, I'm not denying their 
the the power that they they hold for comics all around the world but if you go to many different places in the world you're gonna find that the comics uh, comic strips newspaper strips all of that they were very popular in so many parts of the world and every country has its you know they it has their own um, every country has its own artists its own uh, popular uh, writers and popular cartoonists and uh, you know any other country is no different than the U.S. And Fortnite is a legend. If you go to France and us or Belgium, uh, they they'll tell you he is a legend. And uh, I seen some of his art. He back in the day there was a lot of westerns. Um, you know you, I'm a fan of western comics. Of course they lost popularity back in the 70s, but I'm a big fan of them. And of course he was involved in that. He did a lot of those type of noir style, um, also uh, detective comics. Um, definitely and he brings that here and that's the part that I like about the way he does things um, is that he brings all of that into the way he does the art um, into here you know you, you can see it that that uh, the art stuff that, that that sense of detail that classic drawing you know style that it's kind of missing nowadays of course you got this is newspaper style so there's the classic panel layout which in my opinion it's always clean and clear uh, more than modern versions of modern comics uh, of course he follows that you have to always keep in mind comics they took a lot from newspaper strips newspaper strips was the pretty much the predecessor to what it would become of course comics and of course comics have evolved and they have changed the way they do the the panels but uh, make no mistake the basics are always the basics and great artists they, they, they know how to use this style will be great artists do use in any type of modern style it's all about storytelling and you can see it right here and again you know the first part of the stories uh, they're you know are just uh, dailies and uh, the Sunday strips were larger they got more stories back ends and uh, but yeah I love it here and look at that of course, they did a, a lot of work um, because not all of this was available. So they have to go through the Library of Congress. They have to uh, ac actually ask, um, you know, private collectors uh, for parts. They have to go through different museums all over the world. So it took a couple of years for them, uh, for Danielle to put all this together with her team. But she did a, a heck of a job. I can tell you that this is definitely, in my opinion, one of the best um, uh, collections that I've seen. And there's other companies uh, that they produce, uh, you know, collections of comic strips. Some are phenomenal, but uh, definitely this is one of the best I've seen. Um, the ones I, I own um, definitely is one of the best, or probably the best. Definitely, she did such a fantastic job, and uh, all putting all this together. Some of the stories, of course, because they're connected with the animation, they're clean. There's nothing, you know, outrageous out of the stories, but uh, very interesting and answers so many questions with of course the cartoons uh, you know it really does it really plays uh, homage to that of course there's an interview with Connie the colorist uh, very useful interviews here very useful and again she did the colors for a lot of this stuff in the sun for the Sunday strips uh, and the dailies of course were only black and white but all this bulk of art by Fordham it's amazing I love the way he depicts I love the black and white I really do. I love just without the colors. The art always looks phenomenal. Yeah, but the you know the colors were phenomenal too. But I do like black and white stuff. I just I don't know. I just like the classic black and white comics that I used to read as a child. But yeah, you can see a lot of these characters, and there's a lot of different new characters that actually were not part. Uh, they never came out on the show. There were a few characters that were created only for the comic strip, you know, for the newspaper strip, and they're here, which. It really adds more value to the whole lore, you know, the entirety of the lore of the, in this case, the Masters of the Universe. And of course, he has this, the divider, which is very fun. I love when people, companies think that way, outside the box, and they go classic, because that's a classic thing that no, not even the Marvel um, omnibuses have, you know, and, or the DC, which is sad. It's like they don't think straight, in my opinion. Uh, sometimes when some of the stuff, um, I don't know, I just love that kind of stuff. But look at this. I'm gonna probably shut up and let you kind of enjoy with it. It's just amazing. I'm just, uh, you know, and this is one character, Miranda, one of the characters that was created just for the newspaper strip. Uh, she's never, um, she's the love interest actually of Men at Arms. Um, very cool. And she's just one of many characters that were created for this. 
Uh, some people haven't even asked for this to be brought into, I don't know, the, you know, action figures at some point. That would be great. But love this. I love the, you know, what I like about this card, you know, this comics as a kid, or this type of comics, sci-fi stories. See how beautiful she looks there? Very pretty. What I like about this is that it was a u entirely different universe. As a child, you dream. You dream big. You dream about different worlds and universes and going to different planets, diff different lives from what you live. And what I like about doing, reading this as a kid, and I love the newspaper strips. That's one of my favorite things is my father, you know, he was an avid newspaper reader. So one of my favorite things as a kid was to read the you know newspaper comic strips, um, a sort of Hordak right there. So he's part of it. Of course, Shira was never involved in the comic strip, although they tried to, but they never, uh, they, they didn't allow, they didn't give him green light to the writers to do it uh, because they said that that was a different franchise. They didn't want to mess two franchises into one. They didn't want to mix them up. Uh, I think it's just all about money. But uh, unfortunately, she was never part of this. Uh, but, you know, Hordak was. But um, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, you see Orko right there. I don't know if you can see all that with the camera. This is large, so I have to put the camera really high so you're able to see everything closer. And unfortunately, my camera is at, you know, it's a 1080p, or so it's HD, but it's not a 4K, so it doesn't really add as much. So it's hard for me to really go um, with the, when I edit the videos, to go as close as possible so you can see more detail. Uh, hopefully soon I can get a 4K camera. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much going shopping for one, looking for the right one, which is not an easy thing because there's so many things out there that they have one thing, but they miss on the other thing that you're really looking for. But in any case, um, that's besides the point here. Look at this. Love the inking. You know, of course, Orton does his own inking. Of course, this is a different art style. This is a different purpose. So very, very nice. When you need an extra something, Hmm. All right, here you go. Love the colors. Of course, these people work for the, you know, for the cartoon, for filmation. They did a lot of stuff. Some people did this. Some of these people did the colorist, like Connie. She was involved with a lot of uh, art with them, a lot of cartoons for them. So, of course, it's very natural. that they, it, it looks very similar. It feels very similar. Um, all these people, of course, because they were involved with filmation, uh, they were involved with Hanna-Barbera, they were involved with Disney, they, they did a lot of stuff for their shows, they have worked for those companies. Um, you see how connected they are. That's one thing that you realize, a lot of the greatest cartoons back in the 80s, they have a connection, you know, with other cartoons. And it's because the same people that work for these companies, they move from one company to the other. They move from Disney animation into, um, you know, like a Filmation animation from Hanna-Barbera to, 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 in this case, Filmation uh, for Dick. For all these different companies that they were in charge of all this animation, they are all the same people, the same writers. They, you know, this writer is also the, the, the like Mr. Weber uh, and, and, and his wife. Of course, they were involved with other TV series. Uh, here's, a, in this case, an interview with Chris Weber, um, who he's, has done a lot of stuff with his wife. They work together. I think that's something amazing when you can work with your spouse. Um, but look at that. Um, he definitely did. He's very good. You know, he's very good in his storytelling. I love his little stories are simple, uh, but they're well done. Nothing complicated. If he respects the character, of course, uh, he gave a lot weight to the character. Uh, and these comic strips are, are fun to read. They're not serious read. If you're the type of person that wants something really serious or mature, this is not your thing. But for someone that grew up in this era, the nostalgia, just the nostalgia of these stories. And I love this one. Look at the colors here and the little red dots in the eyes. I always like the design of Skeletor. Very cool. I love the toys. I had great memories with the toys. Too bad that Mattel is doesn't have, you know, Maddie Collector is no longer in business. Super 7 is doing it, but, uh, you know, I haven't really got into Super 7. They're doing a lot of filmation stuff, but there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people are not really satisfied with some of the products. Um, the quality of the product is not the same as Mattel or Maddie Collector, which is sad. Um, you know, it is what it is. It really had a nice run, and I still have to collect a lot of the figures. I just collect a few. Uh, I never got into it as much because I was in another type of collectibles. But definitely, I love the matches of the universe. I love just the figures more than actually the statues. Although some of the statues, like pop culture shock statues, they're more based on the animation. They're phenomenal. I like it more than the sideshow style. 
that is like a revision or modern take on it. it it's just not for me. Uh, but here you go. Too bad that there's not really uh, human master of the universe statues in one six scale, which is uh, a better scale in my case, which I prefer. That would be phenomenal. Hopefully, companies like Tudor Head, which they're doing phenomenal with DC, maybe they take it at one at one point. But here you go. And as it goes, as it progresses, as it gets closer to the end, and the, actually the Sundays lose color. Um, there's still some here, um, but um, they start, you know, the R's are getting not as, um, you know, strong with the inking. It's a little more lighter in the ink. Um, of course, they took uh, a lot of stuff. I don't know if it has to do with the, the digital uh, transfer to it. Uh, because, of course, they, um, they couldn't find a lot of these comics, and they look everywhere. Uh, but there were a lot of missing comic strips, so they have to depend a lot on private um, owners, private collectors. And uh, like you can see right here, this is a big chunk that is missing. You're going to find within the book parts where they miss in parts. So what they did, because Mr. Weber kept the scripts, uh, they were able to put the stories together, but they're missing. They were unable to find it and then look everywhere through, uh, all over the world but they couldn't find any copies. Many of these comics, although they lasted for four years and they were not everywhere in all the newspapers in the US, they became, after they, they were you know pretty much shut down, they were closed, they were very popular in other parts of the world. They were reprinted in, um, in Latin America, they were very popular in Brazil, they were very popular. Uh, places like in, you know, in Europe were extremely popular. So they live long right after. So there is a lot of differences. And of course, they have to adapt to the, uh, you know, to some of the things they have to readjust, even the lettering, um, just so they can put them together because they were missed. They, you know, they couldn't find some of the copies on the Library of the Congress, and uh, of course, some of the records from, you know, Filmation. Of course, Filmation shut down uh, years ago. They closed business, um, and of course, some of this because this was actually, even though it was part of Filmation, a lot of this was involved with Mattel. So some of these copies might still be. Some people saying that they might have. It is still some some warehouse, warehouse somewhere, some file somewhere in the Mattel offices. You may find some of the missing copies, but uh, only time will tell if they were able to find them and actually get a, a newer version, uh, redo some of the things that are missing here in Adam. Uh, as we get closer to the end, you're going to see more of those missing. Now, this is Karen Wilson, the wife of Mr. Weber. Uh, she was the editor, uh, and definitely both together, they really put this, they did a nice job in putting all these strips together and, you know, creating the stories. Uh, here you go, another one, 193 missing, uh, missing right there. And I, again, like I said, as, as we get closer to the end, you're gonna see more missing parts, and there's no coloring on the Sunday strips, um, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Um, I think it, that there were some, but they couldn't find them. Uh, there were some somewhere, but of course, it's been so many years, some of these things go missing. And that's the part where I always, I believe that it's important to preserve the art. It's extremely important to preserve this type of things. And that's one of the reasons why I love hardcover collections, because they preserve the art for the next generations. And uh, I do recommend you, um, Comics are good, you know, the comics have changed the world in many in many different ways. A way to communicate, you know, with children, with adults. And uh, if you are have kids, I would recommend you to introduce them to these older stories. Uh, I think it's better for them, it's easier for them to understand. They're very simple. Um, they don't have the same level of, you know, I would say violence or maturity uh, that some of the newer comics have. But this is the type of comic stories that they should read because it opens their, their world view. It opens the mind so they are able to see, you know, understand principles of honor, respect, all of that. I think those are the best comics that a, a child could ever read and something that our kids are not reading. But here is another one. Uh, there's another they were able to find with colors, another Sunday strip. So I, I like him. It definitely, the stories get more, um, they're really serious. And sometimes, sometimes here, there's some really strong challenges. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, um, unfortunately only lasted four and a half years. Uh, I would have loved for them to follow, you know, to go on and go on. And of course, you, nowadays you can still see He-Man and the Masters of the Universe collections. Uh, DC does, and actually they're coming up with a new uh, book, actually a very soon, I think it's an omnibus, where they collect all the, the stuff they have done, the more recent stuff, which is more mature, of course. Uh, totally different than this. But if you want your kids to read, 
this is definitely for for what it is this is definitely the collection that they should read in my opinion really love it as you can see of course as like i mentioned before as it gets closer to the end the quality of the painting is not as good and of course they they're depending a lot on uh, you know private collections to really get all the stuff together and uh, you can see right here on this page, it misses so many different daily strips. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, the Saturday one, like here is a Sunday. And if this, of course, there's no color there. So they were already, just already pretty much at the end. They still miss a lot of stuff, probably closer to the deadline uh, of, you know, pr publishing the book. So they had to publish it that way. Well, at least they uh, give you the script so you know exactly what happened. It gives you a better idea. But by the end of the last few pages, it, it misses a lot of them. But you have the scripts. Um, you know, as for consolation, that's good. And here you come to the end. It's bonus content. Um, you know, very cool. This is the pitch strip by Lee Nordling. Um, of course, this is before they decide to do this. They decide to come up with something. And this is the one they use. Uh, to recommend, of course, the newspaper strip or the comic book strip and um, uh, using actually the, the Marvel method for this, which is very, very cool. Very cool. And of course, indication differences. Uh, this is Val Staples. And um, of course, these are differences. Depending on the country, they have to make some changes depending on, of course, right here. I don't know if you can see it because in English, uh, and you go to a different language. I'm not sure if this was Greek or Russian or something like that. But, uh, of course, all of this has to change, so they have to, uh, you know, the, the wording is larger, so they have to adjust in the cartoon. As you can see here, it has the finger, here is missing the finger, so they have to adapt for that purpose. So here explains that, and the big difference is, based uh, on the countries that they have to uh, publish, the different newspapers worldwide. And here are scripts and story premises excerpts, this is by Danielle, uh, she does stuff right here. Uh, she's actually doing, uh, Danielle is doing the, the, the stories for some of the, uh, the excerpts on the little packages for uh, Super 7, which is very cool. She's very involved into the process of um, Masters of the Universe. And here are letters for, uh, from Mattel Toys uh, to Mr. Weber. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so there's a lot of pluses. Of course, here you can see on this, He-Man Masters of the Universe. Uh, these are the books that already came out. This is the art of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Very cool. It talks about all the art. It presents the art from, you know, from the beginning until now, which is very cool. This is, of course, the He-Man Masters of the Universe mini comic collection, which I already review. He-Man and She-Ra, complete guide to classic animated adventures. So this is a very cool one. It's all about the, the cartoons. And here is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the newspaper comic strip which is this book now the only difference is that of course the cover is different this is in the back of the book not on the front so it's the same uh, you have the power uh, the art of he man and the masters of the universe pretty cool so he does this just promotional stuff uh, very 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 cool now in conclusion do i recommend this book i certainly do uh, if you're a Masters of the Universe fan, this is definitely a must-have. Uh, I really enjoy it. I really have fun with it. I haven't read it all. I've read a few parts here and there. But there's so many cool stories just to pass, you know, just to pass, you know, and forget about him. It's definitely nice that uh, Danielle and her friends decided to put all this together and really give it a great homage to one, I would say, one of the greatest characters of the 80s. And definitely the newspaper comic strip, it really has that vibe. It's inspired on the cartoons. It, it follows the cartoons. It's closer to the cartoon than, of course, the mini comic is because it was pretty much a continuation of it. It works alongside with it. And definitely it's very, very recommended. I highly, highly recommend it. So uh, what is your opinion? Do you like it? Um, you can find it, of course, many places. Um, definitely, uh, I, I give it a, a, a try. If you don't like he -Man, the Master of the Universe, this is not going to change your mind. If you don't like comic book strips, you find them boring. You, Of course, you're going to feel the same way. But for any He-Man and Master of the Universe fan, for any He-Man fan, for any person that loves the, this kind of stuff, it will be pretty much treasure. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification button. Follow me on the different social media networks and consider supporting this channel to Patreon. All the links are down below. So God bless you and I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.